What do you call a dog in a submarine, guys? No idea. A subwoofer. All right, welcome to episode 38 of Bros, Bumps, and Beers. I am, as always, Pat the EST of Triple B, Gagne, and Matt cracking open a beer. Two T's, Gagne, and Jordan, woo, with a bottle. Look at that. Get, get the cork out. Pop it. Jordan. Try it. Jordan, the jackhammer. Skull. The food. jackhammer can't open a bottle. He's soft, man. You're it soft. has a cork in it, and I'm having. Oh, 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 fuck. That almost hit me in the eye. Yeah, be oh. careful, man. All right, well, oh, okay. Continue firing the whole perpetual fire. Ugh. There you go. Got it. Got it. All right, I fellas. Broke, uh, I have thumb arthritis. Thumb, oh. Thing? oh, 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 that's a visual. <laughs> Jordan sucking on a bottle. Yeah, that's on a the, the top of a bottle without his uh, hands. All right, and gentlemen. He's licking the rim. We are off to a hot start as per usual. Can you imagine we don't have this on it as a YouTube video? Oh. Thank God, we don't. Oh, nice glass. When'd you get that, Matt? Nice Sucrum's glass. I only had that for. Mom got it for my birthday. That's cute. That's nice. That's disgusting. Please stop. All right. Well, uh, I'm trying to make sure it doesn't spill. Welcome to all our adoring fans, the two gentlemen sitting in front of me. We are fresh off watching Elimination Chamber, which was like, you know what? After you guys got in my head about not properly recording WrestleMania again. I over-recorded this one by an hour, <laughs> and it didn't even go three hours, so that no, was cool. You, you, were, you were good by about an hour and 20 minutes. The Oscar <laughs> so match, bad. the Oscar dropped match really uh, really yeah. changed things up. Yeah. yeah. So we're here, and uh, so what's the opinion, Matt, on... Uh, oh, he actually is in He his actually underwear. sits in his underwear while he records. That's... What oh, I missed. Jordan, Jordan got a haircut. I just noticed. I did get a haircut. What this I missed. opening segment is already dog shit. I'm what so happened? <laughs> I've, all of the things are there was a There was a slight beer mishap that led and to when me you said to... When you told us you, you actually sit there and record in your underwear, I didn't believe you. And then you got up and you moved and you actually record in your underwear. It's really hot in this room. Look, I'm wearing the army man one. Look, there's army man. Thank you for the visual. We need to put this on YouTube. <laughs> no, we don't. No, we no don't. I saw if this could ever be my full time job, you can upload this clip after the fact. <laughs> but I can't. I, we can't. Oh, so did everybody have a nice weekend? Because we are officially recording on a Sunday to uh, help out with our my brother Matthew, who is Matt. What do you have to do tomorrow night? Is why that can't why you record? we're recording on a yes. Sunday? Yeah, Matt. Why yeah. can't you record tomorrow night? I thought it was because I have. Kindergarten information night for my son. Ooh. And he Are you is... excited to be going back? <laughs> Man, I'm going to crush it this time around. I know. I, f- I feel like you're going to really knock it out the park. Your time's a charm, yeah. Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they told me the second time would be the easiest. Huh? Jokes Can on you guys... them. Matt failed what... napping. No, no, he definitely I'm not, not a good napper. I'm not a good napper. Oh, I crush it. Me neither. I'm a, I'm a horseshit. If I, if I nap in the day, Reed thinks I'm dead. Jordan, He's like, I is leg- he alive? Jordan, I legitimately can never picture you sleeping. I just picture you continuously drinking energy drinks and running a mile. At 2 a.m., <laughs> just eyes wide open, thinking about everything that's ever happened yeah. to me on my ceiling. My ceiling's like a theater that screen. Visual meme. Visual meme. Visual Jordan meme. is the guy lying beside his girlfriend, and she... And it's like says he's probably thinking about other girls, and Jordan's sitting there thinking about anything else. Anything other than that's other ever girls. happened <laughs> ever. Yeah, it's like, he's you like... Know, the, the Battle of eighteen twelve probably happened more outside of eighteen twelve. <laughs> like that's what's going through my brain. It's like, wouldn't I... it be the Battle of eighteen oh nine to eighteen thirteen? Why is it just one year? Did something big happen? That's that's it's, what happens. It's such a weird thing. Is like Jordan will text us sometimes. Like, hey, watch this on YouTube, and he always like numbers off stuff you should watch on YouTube or listen to podcasts you should listen to. I'm like. 
man, when do you do all this? He's like, oh, I don't go to bed till like 2.30, 3 o'clock no. sometime, most of the time. I mean, I was listening to the Bad Friends podcast, which is Bobby Lane. Oh, I'm sorry to listen to that. It's hilarious. Oh, my it's God. It's super funny. Yeah. It, they just it, like, it's it's like the most jokingly combative thing ever, which is right up my alley. I would just say that they are like uh, a lesser version of us. That's how funny they are. Well, I think they've really perfected wow. the um, combative bits. So like mm -hmm. knowing where to play off each other and like how to make each other like jokingly mad. Um, mm -hmm. The all-time great greatest clip for anyone listening just type in um bad friends bobby lee gun and bobby lee steals andrew santino's bb gun and threatens to shoot him with it and it's the funniest <laughs> clip i've ever seen on youtube like i couldn't stop Jesus. laughing because the idea of bobby lee from mad tv barely knowing how to hold a gun but the fact that the gun can actually hurt someone is is it was i, I i'll probably watch it after this again because it makes me smile just thinking about it but uh, so back, <laughs> but back on track though what was your guys' favorite thing about kindergarten? I never went to kindergarten. Hmm. Wait, what? You didn't go to kindergarten? No, I Why didn't not? go to I didn't go to like public school kindergarten. I went to a private school for kindergarten. I went to a Montessori learning center. Like a Montessori? Yep. You, you actually went to a Montessori? Yeah, that's why I'm so fucking smart. Jordan, do you just wake up and piss excellence? Is that <laughs> What does that feel like? I think I might have, my mom might have been the greatest person to ever go through labor because I started off elite. <laughs> you came out running the 40 yeah, at what a 4.2 yeah janet janet had me in record time <laughs> janet was like the, I have nothing janet, to janet was like the nfl combine of where we are officially at the point <laughs> we are officially at the point in our podcast where we're talking about jordan's mom giving birth i feel this like i have to drink more before we start the podcast no, drink I, less. I don't know what the fuck i don't know where we are we had a whole bunch of shit written down and we're all over the I've fucking place i've had three ten percent beers My, before you, even you, this you one. asked for a favorite gasoline. moment in kindergarten yeah, what favorite is your favorite moment? My kindergarten. favorite moment in kindergarten was when I was born because of my mom. No, okay. Um, so in Montessori <laughs> kindergarten, like they they tried to like put you up at a higher level, right? Like they, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like that was the point. Like if you're paying for your kid to go to private school, you want them to do better. Why you're doing that in, in the well, you know what? Maybe it did work out for me. I don't know. I seem to be doing life is going okay. I'm not I'm not like hard done by or anything. Um, so my favorite moment at Montessori was um for me there is um when you were really young there was like a nap time okay so you would nap at montessori now there was a lady there who jordan would just do push-ups i mean <laughs> if, i mean the other kids were just sleeping like bitches but i was doing clapping push-ups like i was trying to get my fitness in but this lady would do this thing where um to help you go to sleep you know like i don't know if your parents ever did this but they would just like slowly rub their hands like down your forehead and over your eyes so apparently this Hold was on. a thing the, the teacher was doing this now too? Now, hold on. That doesn't now, age well. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But what if the teacher had no sense of, of um, physical distance? So, like, she would not – it was not a graze. It was like <laughs> – like it was, she was giving me. I'm sure my first concussion came from this lady at three year, or four years old, attempting to help me sleep. She was putting her palm through my forehead and just burying my eyes into the ground. Um, and then the, my other favorite thing was they had a big sock of banana medicine, which for those of you who know the banana cough syrup. Why the, did they have medicine? The banana, if in case you were sick, banana medicine. So your daycare or your your kindergarten had. A teacher who would slap you in the face and a huge stock of banana medicine. Yeah, I mean, on top of that, hmm. like, they, I mean, there were obviously some benefits. Well, the school wasn't so bad. No, there were some benefits, um, but it's one of those things where, like, back in 1996 or 5 or whatever year it was, um, you know, it's a different Man, form yeah. of schooling. It was very much more like, um, it was very much more like old school school was Montessori at that time. Well, I'll tell you, I, I got one for you here, Cake. Okay. My favorite kindergarten moment had nothing to do with learning. This is literally the only thing I remember from kindergarten is burn into my skull, burn into my brain. I will never forget it. Okay. So it was blue jello day. I'll never forget it. Blue jello day. It okay? was probably blue day and they had blue jello. No, no, it was blue jello day. That was the snack. Okay. We were so. Are you learning about Magellan? I, who? <laughs> no. <laughs> the great explorer. Yeah. So I'm sitting there with my best buddy in kindergarten, Mike. Okay, and we're sitting there. Your dad and is there I, too. Yeah, I will never forget it. I will not name the kid's name in case by some chance he he still lives in Winnipeg. He and it's not me. This is not fucking me. Okay? Sure, it's not Pat. Go ahead, bud. <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm like, what stinks? 
and we turn around, and oh, this kid he just had dookied. shit himself. He dookied so hard. And it got to the point where it had rolled down his leg, and it was on his shoe. Okay. Oh. Never forget that, ever. As someone who currently teaches kindergarten on a daily basis. You do? Well, not full time, but I see kindergartens every day. For what? As a teacher. Oh, that's right. I forgot phys ed. At, I forgot phys ed in your school was like up and down the yeah. up and down the. Okay. Kids pooping themselves once a week. I thought you were a high school phys ed teacher. Like, do you not even anymore. follow our lives like Man, at all? I have not. Been no, teacher. I haven't been no, a high school fucking phys ed public servant. Like, just fucking take my taxes and do your job. Right. He hasn't been a high school te- uh, phys ed teacher in two years. Four years. Four oh years. Brother. Oh, that's tough, Pat. That's a tough scene. That's Pat, tough that's look. a tough scene. That's, tough that's a tough <laughs> scene. Hate to see it. Hate to see it. Hate to see it. Okay, so my kindergarten story. So I have two. One's a kindergarten story. One's just like an early elementary story. So the first one, the one thing I vividly remember about kindergarten was this one kid. I'm not going to name his name, but he later on was in Man, jail. Man, you guys are very tentative here. Can we just put some body bags out? Like... Let's, let's no, because this guy, this guy, this guy, as much as like in elementary school, we were cool. He's been in jail a couple times and mm. he scares me. So I'm not, I'm <laughs> this not. This is self preservation. I respect it. Continue. Yeah. So uh, all I remember, and th- this makes a lot of sense now, thinking back on it, mm-hmm. he took these, we had these like linking, uh, like almost like chain rings, and you could yeah. link them all together. Yeah. And he, one day during like free play, linked them all together. Put him around his neck like a dog collar, and then tied one into a table, and pretended that he was uh, like somebody's like slave, for b- lack of a better term. Jesus. He had a whole game going on. It was the scariest thing I had ever experienced. Like, That's imagine so a five-year-old, and you're like, "What's going on over there? Like, why is he doing that?" That, that guy, crazy. that guy's into some shit. Yeah, that's some wild yeah. shit. He probably, yeah. he probably's, uh, he he's probably uh, likes to, you know, likes to get freaky. Go, or go He's, to prison. Yeah. Or go to prison. <laughs> um, yeah. But then probably the and Pat's poop story kind of reminded me of this. So I think I was in like grade two. Sorry, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. Every every good poop story behests another poop story. <laughs> and I had a crazy stomach ache. Um, so I went to the I told my teacher, like, I'm sick. Like I need to call my mom. So they call my mom. She leaves work, comes and picks me up. Pat knows this story, I think. No, I never. I don't know this story. Really? No. She comes and picks me up, and then we get in the car, and she looks at me, and she's just like asking me questions about my stomach ache, and she stops, pauses, looks at me, and goes, "Matthew, do you need to poop?" <laughs> and I went, and I looked at her, and went, "So bad, mom. I, I did not poop at school till <laughs> I was in grade nine. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. What grade, Matthew? Nine. No, there's no way. Yeah, yeah, no. I found the yes, it was grade nine <laughs> pancake breakfast. He even knows what he ate. You know what? You get you get very comfortable. Um, you even have favorite public bathrooms. Oh, yeah. Um, when you spend a lot of time like out and about in the in my old life when I used to not be able to go home uh every day. Uh you you go from like being like, ah, like I, I prefer not to poop in public to pretty much being like, well. It's about that time, so I'm going to go to the bathroom in the east wing of this building, which is very <laughs> spacious and wonderful. Um, and, you know, and, and so Marble you end up f- finding a favorite bathroom. So That is true. University. University of St. Boniface, the best bathroom in the world. We called it the Marble Palace. It was a bathroom completely, like, decked out in fake. It was fake marble, right? Like, it wasn't real. No, it was Granite Palace. We called the Granite Palace. Palace. Good old Granite. USB, baby. USB. Yeah. USB, baby. But back then it was State USB because it was a university college, which is a thing, apparently. You, did yeah, you sell any books it, to them, Jordan? Um, they still use our top flight chemistry platform. Actually, I helped them program French questions um, for French students specifically back in the day. So, Look yeah. at you um, helping, the, helping the Francophones. Jordan, the Francophones. Jordan, once again, when you wake up and piss excellence, do you put your cape on after or before? I, I mostly just, you know, like Captain Underpants? Mm-hmm. <laughs> There you go. I'm getting a visual now that I can That's actually it. visualize. <laughs> That's it. I don't know French. I'm but loving I, it. I don't know French, but I know how to switch the keyboard so someone who does can type it. That's what I know how to do. <laughs> it's true. That's that a, that's French a good Canadian skill. keyboard comes through clutch on our end. Well, uh, so now that we went to like good memories, I just had a really a memory that's going to haunt me for the rest of my days. I think I had to go grocery shopping yesterday. It was my week to go grocery shopping. Always the worst week ever when you have to go grocery shopping. Now, do you guys not go together because of COVID? 
Or did you not? Yeah, go right now we don't go because of COVID. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just, yeah, there's okay. that sign that says one per household. Rand's got into this this pretty awesome routine of making a big batch of soup every Sunday that we eat for lunch during the week. Ah, it's sweet. But this one, she really wanted to go a little crazy, and she needed a lot of uh, different ingredients. Let's just say one of the ingredients was kale. I've never bought kale in my whole fucking life. <laughs> so. Yeah. I walk in and I she gives me this list and I'm like, oh, this is going to be a disaster. And then I walk in. The worst part about the Safeway on kids. Marion, they changed the layout of the store. Yep. The worst <laughs> thing that can ever happen to a grocery store. I knew where everything was. I had been going there for a couple of years now. I knew where everything fucking was. Now I walk in, no idea. So groceries, which usually takes 25 minutes, we're into an hour now. And then I get to the list with all the soup fucking ingredients and one says tomato paste yeah what the fuck is that that's not i've never bought so, that in my entire that's life. so uh, simple <laughs> I've never i bought sometimes, sometimes today I'm alone so embarrassed to be today alone i bought tomato paste tomato puree diced tomatoes and whole tomatoes for two like for for three of those things in one recipe i made like a can a cannelloni with uh, stuff with spinach and ricotta tonight just for tonight Pat, I, I can name you three different brands of tomato paste. Yeah, well, you know what? And you know what happened? I was there, and then I got to that part of the list, and I think for three aisles, I called Rayanne twice in each aisle, and it was like, hey, me again. How are you? What the hell is tomato paste? It was like, just buy this one. It's this brand. I'm like, oh, but I think there's one that's that's less expensive. So I grabbed it. Guess what I bought? Didn't buy tomato paste. I bought tomato, tomato sauce. sauce. Yeah. Really fuck that up. Um, or you, yeah. So I feel like there's nothing more wasteful in the world than tomato paste because every recipe I ever work with needs either one tablespoon or two, but the amounts that it comes in is like five. So yeah. I like buy tomato paste, but You're it goes bad by the time I'm ready to use. I need to use it again. And so tomato paste for me is like, well, I bought this can for one tablespoon of well, tomato paste, and now it goes in the garbage. So it's, yeah, but, it's kind but of then by, but then by the end that I get to that dollar you to spend. pay. Yeah, it's well, it's, it's still, that it's big annoying. discussion. Ran Ran wants us to use those reusable bags now because we know we we love the earth or something. What reusable bags? Like you can buy. Like reusable oh, bags. we have the bins. Yeah, I, I'm a big. I yeah, use we the use bins. the bins. Yeah, so she has those, and then I always forget them because I took them once. Well, forget is kind of a loose term. I kind of just don't bring them because the one time I did bring them, you know what the cashiers don't do? Touch your reusable bags right now. No. And so they ring you through real fast, and then they stare at you like you're an idiot because you don't fill up the reusable bags fast enough. Why are you going to a cashier and not using self-checkout? What am I, a monster? I have like 50 items. The hell am oh, I, I self-check out every, no, every single time. We're we and I have you're a part of the problem. You're part we of the and problem. I have a system. We're so fast at the grocery store. Like she, she scans. I, I like Where do you go? Tetris. Superstore? Superstore, baby. Superstore buys mm. it. I go with that's, the, I go with the fight. I go with everybody. That is so wrong. At. If you have more than 10 items, you shouldn't be allowed to self-check out. I, nobody uses I, it. And we're I so disagree. much faster. We're so fast. No, that's, no, that's 100% wrong because then you're way, if I'm showing up, I want to get like a fucking quart of milk and it's just one item. And then no, who jack- calls it a quart of milk? I, I heard that in a movie the other day. I really wanted to use it. So, and I, I want to just you pay American. and get the, pay and get the fuck <laughs> out. And I got Jordan, jo- Jordan Schofield over here, freaking putting through 25 items on a fucking self check out. Come on. Pat, I know the numbers for all the veggies. That's nothing to be bragging about. Yeah. You're the no- good for you. Because that's how often we use it. Matt, that's this. how often we use it. It's like, Rio will be like, oh, red peppers. And I'm like, oh, got it. Nine, three, six, eight. Like, that's it's. Wow. I know, but that's what I mean. It's like, that's, we do it every week. You Jerks know, you guys are really ruining my right story. Now. You we guys do, are ruining I, my story because you like grocery shopping. Pat, we this should be. Yeah, if, we I, should I actually really enjoy grocery shopping. We should be nothing if not efficient in this world, Patrick. Nothing it's, is not efficient. This is bullshit. This is my own personal hell. And you guys are saying, oh, you know, I really enjoy going with the wife and picking out all. You guys are fucked. It's the worst thing you can do. Pat, just because for you going to the grocery store is like completing rocket science doesn't mean that the rest of us have to come down to your level. Right. Some of uh, us you know are what just the athletes. What? Some of us know what toma- like different types of tomato things are. Your grocery shopping is like me pooping in public. No, but I actually do it. I do it. I'll do I it. do go I grocery do it. Yeah, but you don't do, do it well. <laughs> yeah. Well, poop in poop. public? I do it <laughs> well in public. Matt, you didn't poop till grade nine. You literally have. Yeah, but now, but now I have, have no You have limited fear. experience pooping in public. Matt, you've barely pooped in public for half your life. 
Yeah, that's pretty accurate, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, no. Oh. Yeah, I just the gro- I've take. been grocery shopping just for like five years. So, like, I have some leeway of not knowing what the fuck I'm Did doing. you guys live at home when you went to school? Yeah. That's Where else why. would I have lived? Where that's else would why. I have lived? No, that's why. <laughs> there's there's nothing I'm more ready to do than when my kid is a kid's going to go to school. Even if it's you of Manitoba, they're not living at home. Nothing made me grow up faster than my parents like kicking me out the house. You, know, oh, you think you're a grown up? Okay, cool. I'm a fucking grown hey, up. Hey Pat, you want you want to enjoy grocery shopping? You know what you need to do? What's that? Have a kid because it's an easy forty five minute ex- excuse to not be around your children. <laughs> it's Ow. suddenly super slow. Wait, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Dad of the year award goes to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's like honey i'm gonna be an extra while i want to check the the calorie counts on every single can of, or, bo- or package of chips just want to make sure everything's healthy for the kids you know? all right now that we've exactly. now that we've covered uh well what did we cover i don't know con- congratulations to those of you who got through the first five minutes of this podcast opening <laughs> and then l- listen to us talk about shitting yourself and then how bad we are at groceries i'm still how wearing t- army men boxers by the way that hasn't changed <laughs> That was amazing. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's talk about some beer, shall we? Now, uh, I'll start because I, I, I reloaded this, uh, this weekend and I didn't go for any new releases. I got a lot of core pours, coward, a lot of stuff I've drank already. <laughs> Did you call me a coward? <laughs> Did, I a coward. Did I stutter? Did I stutter? I just, I just couldn't hear you because coward. you whispered it like a little, like a fraud. Mm, I'm had, pretty sure I said it pretty loud. We had numerous <laughs> new releases this week, and Pat's like, hey guys, I got this. I got a bunch of core pours. Like, oh great, Pat, thank you. Thanks for filling up the beer review slide. Look, <laughs> look, my beer store is close to me. They didn't have a lot of new releases, so I got some core pours, okay? The queue was humming the last two weeks. Yeah, Absolutely okay, I don't, humming. Some days you don't just some days you just don't want to go to the queue, okay? God damn. <laughs> Did anyway, any of you so, get that margarita beer from Kilter? I'm really regretting not getting my hands on that. A uh, pizza small batch. No, no. Pizza does not belong in beer, Damn just it. as much as pineapple does not belong on pizza. I, I'll kill Anyways. you right now. I'll kill wow. you right now. <laughs> I had pineapple right and fried now. rice the other day. It was incredible. Oh, so good. Yeah. Anyways, I uh, <laughs> I am drinking One Great City Brewing Company. Our friends at One Great City Brewing yes. Company. Yes, I am drinking the Monkey Trail Pale Ale which is a 4.5% alcohol and just a light golden ale with a strong... Matt, hold on. Matt's about to sneeze. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he didn't even sneeze. Anyways. You cucked us out of sneezing. Come. It didn't a light, come. A light golden pale come. ale Phrasing. with a strong citrus Phrasing. character backed up by a light and sweet malt body. Now, the only thing I have to say, this is a very good pale ale, but I will say one thing. It doesn't have that weird aftertaste that some pale ales can have. This is crisp and smooth all the way through. It is awesome. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what? 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 What makes it a trail pale ale? A monkey that, trail. Monkey trails are a Winnipeg thing. Yeah, monkey trails are like a bike path. Yeah, but it's on the can. It's like it's called. Hey, this beer is called Monkey, and it's a trail pale ale. Like, look at the way the can's written. I didn't really think much of it because monkey trails are a thing in Winnipeg. We that's where you go biking. I know, but if you look at the can. And I'm you aware. don't know that, like me, it looks like the can's called Monkey. Well, then you're a moron because you don't know Winnipeg shit. Anyways, just, God just, damn it. This I is just, the worst. Shut up. I just Anyways, expect good can discipline. This is crisp. This is good for a, a, drinking on the patio in the summer. Or if you're in the winter and you're sitting around a fire today, can't get the smell of fire out of my hair. Uh, this is just a really great beer. Really solid. Uh, you can follow me on Untapped at Pat Gagne. I'm going to give this a 3.5 out of 5. Really solid effort from our friends at Wayne Great City. Now, Jordan, you can go next. Can't wait for you to talk for way too long. <laughs> All right. Well, my beer is properly named. Um, it has the right font on it, so I understand <laughs> what I'm drinking. Um, so I have the Belgian Pecan from Nonsuch. Uh, it's the beer that I struggled to open, which is always a good start when you can't get to the product that you need. But that, I'm not going to blame Nonsuch for that. That's my own ineptitude coming through. Big word. Look it up. Um, so basically, <laughs> Pat, I'm glad you like that. Um, so this is one of the more interesting beers I've had in a while because um, I know the Belgian Blonde pretty well. And I like it a lot. I think it's like one of the best beer pong beers Um you can use um, only you would years. use like a. What are you eighteen years old in high school? Like what the fuck? Are you, beer pong beer. <laughs> you don't have a beer pong beer ready at all times. Yeah, it's called Bud Light. 
I mean, yeah, if, if you're playing with water, you can do that too. Anyways, so with the Belgian Blonde, and then it's the Belgian Pecan. Now, the problem is, is I love a pecan pie. Absolutely love it with all my heart. So I was kind of thinking in my dumb brain that this was going to taste like a pecan pie. Now that, I realize, is stupid talk, and I did this to myself. So here's what this really tastes like. This tastes a lot more like a saison than I thought it would. Uh, that has really caught me off guard because I don't really like saisons, as Pat knows and Matt knows. Saison. So saison. ha uh -huh. Um, I don't think that's French at all, actually. I don't think Saison even has a thing, but it sounds French. Um, so this beer is ve it's just Saison very... Saison is French, but... Is it season, French? But... Yes, it's French. Just continue. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, so it, it is. It's very Saison-y. Um, so for me, it's like not really my cup of tea. I don't really get a lot of pecan. Um, I don't know. It's, you know... We talk about those beers that we don't think are bad, like they're high quality, but they're just like really not for you. This is exactly where I'm at with this. Like this just isn't something I love, but like you can tell it has that typical non-such like quality to it. So because of that, I'm going to give it a adjusted mediate score of three, um, where for me, it's like a two of flavor, but like four for quality. So I'm just going to have to slap it smack dab in the middle. If you like saisons you're probably gonna love this if you um so I'll, I'll say that so i'm gonna give this a three but that's mostly because it just doesn't really hit what i want flavor wise but quality wise you get your typical non-such uh non-such flair so matt over to you for the person who genuinely takes the longest typically to do this so i went to fort gary they're doing a lot more craft beer releases uh or small batch sorry releases for their thumb bargain Coffee Roasters Coffee Stout. Uh, it's a cold brewed coffee stout. Uh, they're basically they went around to every craft brewery in the city and were like, "Hey, brew a coffee stout, and we'll give you coffee for it." And you know what? It's pretty standard as far as coffee stouts go. You get that coffee flavor, a little bit of bitterness on the finish. Uh, this one's a little bit thinner bodied, um, which makes it a little bit Smoother, maybe a little bit more easy drinking for those of you who aren't big heavy stout fans. Uh, I don't know, like it's it's fine. I, I've been drinking a lot of beers lately that I've just been like, yeah, that's fine. It's it's not great. It's not it's not gonna knock your socks off. It's pretty good. Um, so if you follow me on Untapped at Gagne Matt, uh, I'm gonna give this pretty standard score. I'm gonna give it a three. All right. Well. Appreciate that. And uh, so just a quick recap. I had the Monkey Trail Pale Ale from One Great City Brewing Company. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 on Untap. You can follow me at Pat Gani. Jordan had the non-such Belgian Pecan. He gave it a 3, point, uh, 3 out of 5 on Untap. You can follow him at JSCO55, which he forgot to mention once again. And Matt had the Fort Gary Tom Bargain. I believe I pronounced that correctly. Uh, he gave it a 3 on 5. You can follow him at Gani Matt with dose taze and now we go to jordan for the winnipeg beer news of the week all right not sure what a three on five is but thanks for saying that uh pat um all right so what three on you five said, is your score you, yeah you say you said you gave it a three on five would it be a three out of five three on five is the same thing but continue with the beer news How, so a three on top of five like what yeah that that's, a like, that's a fraction that's a fraction yeah but then i think both are acceptable yeah. Yeah, okay. You know what, Pat? You know what, Pat? That's enough, right? Figure it out. And you Figure can out, even Jordan. write down where it starts this. Oh, here we go, spies. Okay, so let's uh <laughs> I don't know if this is news necessarily, but Kilter had a bit of a, a bit of a snafu this week. Um they were supposed to release what they said was their um hoppiest double IPA to date. And by release they meant um overhop the shit out of the beer and weren't able to sell it. <laughs> um, so that's tough. I actually don't think, have they been, have they come back with it yet? Apparently Tuesday. Okay. So I was looking for the news to see if they came back with it and they didn't. So they overhopped it to the point where we're going to be like a week behind on the release. That being they're said. They're releasing it with Juicy actually on Tuesday. That's awesome. That being said, their cans look absolutely dynamite. Um, so that's super cool. Uh, in addition to that, La Shop coming out with the La Shop Night Owl, a classic stout, rich multi-mouth. 
light chocolate caramel notes. So that's something new from Le Shop. You don't get uh, new stuff from them too often, so make sure to pick that up. Oxus has come out with the Vostok uh, double IPA. Um, frankly, it's fantastic. I had it just before this. It was one of the beers I had that led me to this point in my life this evening, <laughs> um, and it was really good. Black Wheat Brewing has come out. This is Brandon Manitoba now coming through. They have the Blue Hills Brew with Blueberry L as well as a uh, Cream Ale. Um, Blue Hills I'll probably review for us next week, but I had the Cream Ale. It was really solid, so well done by them. Good to welcome Brandon to the beer scene. Um, Half Pints has the Saison de la Ceinture. You know, like, why? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> Half pints. Okay, so Half Pints um, put out a beer that no one's allowed to say unless you live in a province and like a de la of the country. All okay, right, so if you live in Quebec, certain parts of New Brunswick or certain parts of Manitoba, you'll know what this is. Beyond that, it's just a beer. Just drink it. Um, so bad. Half Pints, you have no faster way to get on my shit list than produce a beer that like I can't even try to guess at. Uh, Sucrums has an Italian Pilsner. Um, it's a Pilsner that when you buy it, it complains about the service. Um, no. <laughs> um, but uh, overall, it's, a, it's very close to a German Pilsner. Um, lots of dry hopping with noble hops. Sorry, Paul. Um, Kilter came out with the margarita. I really wanted to get my hands on this, and I frankly forgot <laughs> at 2 p.m. to order it. Um, something about a beer... That is a pizza beer with tomatoes, basil, and pizza crust. Interests the shit out of me. Um, but I wasn't able to get my hands on it. And Nonsuch rounds it back out by coming back out with the Farmhouse Ale number three and their Hefweizen. I will absolutely love, absolutely love Nonsuch's Hefweizen. Um, so I got to make sure to get my hands on that as well. But um, Pat, back, back up to you. <laughs> Just just wow. Just wow. This first segment. Just God bless everybody who listened through all, all the way through this first segment. It's gonna sound better because they're not gonna hear all the internet problems. <laughs> I, My Jordan, name is Paul, Paul Jordan, Jordan, God bless you for cutting this up because it is gonna be an absolute <laughs> yeah, I, nightmare. I, I hate myself. Really. But that being said, we will be right back with some wet breads and some rocket ships. Oh Michael, this is gonna be fun to watch. All right, welcome back. Wet Breads, Rocket Ships. Matt, no honorable mentions today. Let's keep it tight. I'll try. I'll try. Okay. All right, so let's start off with... Uh, Jordan, what do you want to start with? You want to be negative or you want to be positive? Oh, you know me, Pat. I am nothing but a beacon of positivity. Okay, so let's start with some positive positive vibes only. Um, I'll start a little bit off the wall, a little bit, a little bit outside of our big NXT, WWE, and uh, AEW. Did you guys see the highlights or watch any of the matches from Josh Barnett's Bloodsport 5? I can confirm I did not. This is on your positive side? I thought this shit was so cool. <laughs> this so is dumb. what... It, Jordan, okay, you remember Raw Underground? Yeah. This was like Raw Underground, but like what Raw Underground wanted to be. I will look at it and probably hate it, but okay. You'll probably hate it. Their main event was Davey Boy Smith Jr. against John Moxley. So you'll probably hate it. Oh, I'm going to hate it. Turns for sure gonna I hate it. every ounce of it now. And it's like a mix. <laughs> I might hate jo- watch it. Because it's Josh Barnett, he kind of wants to get that vibe of MMA. So matches don't end in pinfall. They end in like submission and uh, KO. It's Raw KOs. Underground. It, it's Raw Underground. But they did it way before Raw Underground started. This is like the fifth one. Yeah, but it's still... it's Okay, so uh... anyways... Obviously, you guys didn't like it. I thought it was super cool. They beat the shit I out of each other. I saw highlights, and I thought it was dumb. Okay, so you don't have to be angry at me. I didn't invent John Barnett's Bloodsport 5, okay? Why so, are we trying to make wrestling something that's not wrestling? Thank I you. thought it was still wrestling. I still thought it was cool. It was different. It was not. Wrestling. Well, that, that's different the take. problem is it's still wrestling. But they're, they're advertising it as something it's not. No, they're not. They're advertising it as wrestling, but a different style of wrestling. No, no, they're not. They're uh, Pat. I'm with. I'm. Pr- I'm probably with Matt. I haven't seen it, but I'm gonna watch it and probably be with Matt. I thought it was fun. I thought it was different. I en- I enjoyed what I watched. I Matt's didn't making a rage note. Yeah, I've never wow. seen someone write um, so close to the like. Matt might as well be writing through his glasses. Like his pen might as well be in his eyes. Okay, so there. I just. I think Josh Barnett's Bloodsport was a fun looking show. I watched a few matches. I thought it was interesting. Something different. 
I think wrestling's starting to be a little different all the time. AEW is very different from WWE. This was another thing. How can thing you shit it. on Raw Underground but then think that's cool? That's, I didn't shit on. You're, I didn't you're a shit. I didn't, is AEW that whoa, whoa, whoa. different from WWE? I didn't shit on Raw Underground. I enjoyed Raw Underground when it was on. Okay, Jordan well, hated it. Okay. I hated it with a passion. Damn, oh, man. I still do. Uh, by the way, AEW is not that different from WWE anymore. No, they're the same damn thing. They're the same damn thing. Okay, I'm wow. fired up now. Wow. Way to go. Tr- fired you. Okay. That was my rocket ship, Matt, because you're such a great wrestling mind. Well, Pat ran out of gasoline ship? before we even took off. That was such a shitty rocket ship. So, Matt, wow. save us, please. Is it my turn? Yeah, it's my turn. turn. Rocket ship? All right. Mine is a two-parter. Of course it is. And it's a two-parter. Be- well, no, just listen. It's a two-parter because of what happened tonight on the Elimination Chamber. So f- my rocket ship is the last two minutes of SmackDown. That felt Attitude Era-esque. Guys mm-hmm. trading finishers with your champ standing tall at the end. That was fun. I thought that, that was, was flipping awesome. And then you followed up with the Elimination Chamber match for SmackDown tonight, which I thought was like it slightly was good. better it than the good. second one. That was the best match on the card, and that when you put that much talent inside together, you're bound to get a good match. And then you throw in the storytelling of Roman Reigns and Edge. Let's go! Give me I'm that in, all day. I'm in for it. I'm in for it. I, Edge, and, Edge and Roman all awesome. day long. Absolutely. I we're sitting here on Zoom on Friday night with the boys. I've had a couple of pops, and all of a sudden, the last two minutes of SmackDown come up. I I was over the moon. Wow. That's it. I like your, I enjoy your passion, Matt. Jordan, what was your rocket ship of the week? Uh, my rocket ship. I'll take it back to some real, some real quality wrestling, not some fake bullshit like blood sport. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nia uh, and Raquel going at it. Shayna Baszler and Dakota Kai. I, um, I'm in. I'm I in saw that and was like, yes, please and thank you. Twice on Sunday. That's fantastic. Uh, that's that's really all I wanted to say. It's like I thought wrestling this week was like there was nothing that really stood out to me. Yeah. Those two walked out. I saw everyone face off, and I went, "I would like to see this now. Let's speed this up." So I'm not totally yeah. sold on how Dakota Kai fits in there. I think she's not the same kind of style of the other three. I think Dakota's very versatile. I think like Dakota's actually one of the more underused women's talent. Oh, I like her. I, I love Dakota Kai. I think so she's I'm all really for like she's silly talented and she doesn't get enough play. She doesn't get a, enough credit. Is that a WrestleMania match? Yes. I, hope so. I think it, uh, it won't be, but I think it should be. I think they're doing it on they're they're doing it before them, but that's oh. I think, but that's that's like that's that's a wagon of a match. If you, I have, think that's a great WrestleMania yeah, match. match. Yeah, that's a night one WrestleMania match. 100%. Yeah, that's that's really good. So that's all. I'll keep it short. I just saw those four in the ring together, and then my rocket ship will include the other three who were in the ring at the same time. <laughs> or my wet bread, wet bread. Sorry. Thank you. Um, Pat, yeah, so you. why don't you just go then? <laughs> uh, I can, Pat. If that's cool. Yeah, with you. go ahead. It's all okay, your way. So, um, MSK. Uh, I didn't think oh, I could fuck. hate them anymore. I really didn't. I really didn't uh, think I could dislike them more. And now they're trying to be the New Day Light. Christ they're Lord. trying to be New Day Light. You have these four awesome women like going head to head, and they're in the corner eating popcorn. Okay, eating popcorn like it's some kind of fucking gimmick bullshit. Like it, it's wrestling, so it is gimmicky, but it is like. 9,000 times gimmicky. Their promos are more cringy than John Cena in his cringy prime. And yeah, Matt, yeah, Matt, deal with it. And on top of that, one of the guys faints at the end. Fa- oh, one of the boy. guys faints at the just... end over nothing. MSK, they're trying to set them up like New Day, and they're you cannot recreate New Day's skill for what they do. MSK... I officially am putting MSK in Young Bucks hate territory. That's where they're at for me. I well, you're think... damn close to that territory. You keep coming after John Cena when you're talking I about MSK. I can't stand you put them in the MSK. same conversation. I can't stand MSK. They're on my favorite wrestling show every week, so I have to watch MSK. They are not my cup of tea, and that's the nicest thing I can think of to talk about those two. So that's Leave it. Leave John Cena alone. MSK and their popcorn bullshit. He works out with Cesaro. Sucks. <laughs> sucks, sucks, sucks. They've started they're, right now. They're being built horribly. Their stupid hand signal, which is an upside down A. So they're like, 
Buh. That's an A, dumbass. It's not even an M or an S or a K. All right? It doesn't make any sense. All right? So I hate all of it. Over to whoever the fuck wants to go next. I can't. Yeah. It pissed me off so much. Well, like, I'll I'll, Jordan, I'll jump on board with the hate wagon. Um, my wet bread, Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy needs to stop. Yeah, no, that that, that dirty money doing. stick is shit. Look, Matt Hardy came into AEW and he he he's went been from one of the most to, creative characters ever. To... He's been, you know what? I'm gonna say it. We're gonna do a draft later. Uh, the broken Matt Hardy gimmick, maybe the most overrated thing in wrestling in the last. I disagree time. with that. I enjoyed yeah, it. I, 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 I thought it was so different. I, I Let's thought save it was it for later. Let's save it yeah, but for later. different. But different doesn't mean good. But anyways, like MSK. I, okay. And then he came to AEW and he tried to recreate it. He just continuously tried to recreate it. And he was teleporting at a certain point. They were trying to do different things. And then it fell flat. Perfectly reasonable. Uh, he almost died <laughs> when Sammy Guevara almost uh, backed <laughs> like his skull in. Die. And then I think what happened to his brain after that was like, I'm going to be a selfish, greedy manager gimmick, which is stupid. Trailblazing. Now, why are they talking about winning somebody's first quarter earnings in a match? That It's just so dumb. It's so dumb. It's pretty dumb. It, I agree. It doesn't make because they saw Cameron Grimes get over, and they're like, "We should capitalize on stock markets." <sighs> but it's just, yeah, it just it doesn't work for me now. Pat, now are you on like, board with the Cameron Grimes trade? To the moon, I'm in. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, yeah. I told, I knew you'd come around. He's fantastic. He's got a gimmick now. He's, he's got a really gimmick now. fantastic. Yeah, he's got a gimmick now. Um, but yeah, no, Matt Hardy not doing for me anymore. I think Matt Hardy needs to transition to a backstage role. And Can I just say something it. like really quick? I think Cameron Grimes has main roster potential. I think so. He fits. He fits that main roster like a, a southern Ted DiBiase. I yes, think he can be that. like you have that a little bit of Daniel Bryan in terms of like I think I see a lot of like Daniel Bryan and his in ring work, and then yeah. you add like he has that goofy main roster type of personality type of like gimmick, mm -hmm. and I don't think he's going to be on NXT for long. Like he no. screams like mid card main roster stalwart to me. I think he has a lot going for him. All right, Matt, round us out. Your wet bread of the week before you cut your internet cuts out again. There's not a lot of stuff in wrestling that I absolutely hate. Like a lot of stuff might rub me the wrong way, but I don't really hate anything except for this. Oh, I hate death matches. You know what I hate more than death matches? Exploding death matches because that is stupid. It's so stupid i don't care if it's big in japan i don't care if terry funk and mankind I, and I, mankind i, I want to see death mick foley uh, cactus jack whatever went on about this this is dumb it's more dumb than blood sport it's more dumb than that not the movie the movie was awesome but great like movie. josh Barnett's stuff fucking great movie great movie a fucking great movie but you want to put two guys in a ring with stuff blowing up yes and you want people to be like, this is believable. No, it's dumb. Yes. It's dumb. No, if I have I'm to watch MSK, match. I should be allowed to watch Exploding Death Matches. Yeah, you no, like this... Exploding Death Matches? I think if you know me, you know that there's a part of me that likes Exploding Death Matches. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really that surprised by it. Like, I'm not saying I want to see it every week, but you know what I want to see from that match straight up? I want to see them, like, push the boundaries of what you can show on television. Like, I want this to be, like, banana land, like, everybody's bleeding. Um, it'll be very hokey, thumbtacks. and it'll be very lame. It's going to be hokey and lame. If, okay, if it's if it's not at least as good as the shit I watch on YouTube in Japan, I'm going to be upset. It won't be that. There's no God way it'll be that. It. No. All right, well, so... Uh, yeah, fair. We'll leave it at that. A very quick wet bread and rocket ship. Dumb. Because we want to give us some time. Our next segment, Flight in a Pint, is back, and we are going to do be doing one of my favorite topics in wrestling when we come back, so stay tuned for Flight in a Pint. This is dangerous, JR. This is real dangerous. All right, we're so back. This, this, the return of the Flight in a Pint, uh, <laughs> this was Matt's. Matt's very excited for this one. Yeah, Matt came through um, on this one. This was a Matt yeah, Kanye so special, So this, this, uh, this is going to get a little contentious. I think this is going to be very... What floats your boat and what doesn't float your boat? So, Jordan, I will let you dial this one up. What is our flight in a pint? Oh, this fuck. Week? I thought you were going to tell me to go first. I was like, my heart no, no, stopped. No, no. Um, <laughs> okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, this is a flight. Okay, this is a flight. 
This is a United Airlines flight, except one of the engines is currently on fire, specifically <laughs> on the right side. And then the left engine's totally fine. And you're like, excuse me, ma'am, I'm also going to need a pint because I'm scared shitless. Um, but for those of you who are scared of flying, just know that most planes can actually run on one active engine. So you're, Jordan, you're standpoint, fine. Standpoint here, Jordan. Uh, anyways, this is a flight in a that pint. That was an interesting things. fact, though. No, it's good. Uh, this is a, a flight in a pint of things that are overrated. Again, like no, two wrestlers engines. that are overrated. Wrestlers, wrestlers that are overrated. Singles wrestlers only. Again, things that are overrated. Two engines on an aircraft. If one's on fire, one's not. You can sue for damages and emotional negligence. And now you're rich. And you've been able to name the most overrated wrestlers of all time. Pat, kick us off. Right, so uh, for the order, I would say as a reward that I won the Royal Rumble – Draft. Uh, I should go first. You get rewarded because Matt, Matt, Matt and I didn't do it yet. You didn't do it yet. You didn't do it yet. How, how do you? Okay. How so long is he going to? Why do you get to Matt? pick the order? Why do you get to pick the order? Matt, he's going to milk because I won. Because I won. Yeah, and me and Jordan. When okay, we can... okay, Jordan. Uh, you know what, Matt? I get to pick the order. Then Matt, you're going to go first. Oh no. Were we just discussing why you got to pick the order? Matt's gonna go first because he bitches all the time. Okay. Jordan will I don't go second. Go first. You are. Jordan will go second, and I will go last. You know what, Matt? That I can't hate. Like some Pat took initiative there, and there's if there's one thing I like You're, in this life. Oh shit! Because second's the best pick in this. No, one. no, Matt. No, no. If there's okay, one Matt, thing I Matt, can respect, I want you to, it's being efficient. I want you to quit bitching, and Matt, you're the first pick in overrated wrestlers flight in a pint. I was actually hoping first I was overall go pick. third, so I'm still actively panicking because you know, like yeah. we haven't done flight in a pint in a while, which well, is I mean, bullshit, I by the, the way. Draft, but then you go and you just you're taking quit stalling. Pick <laughs> someone. <laughs> you took this like leadership. I know who exactly who I'm picking, but you took this leadership point that nobody asked you to take i do the open every episode i lead the episode that that <laughs> isn't even a thing all right with the first pick oh, shit. first overall in round one in the fight and a pint of overrated wrestlers i think there is only one that can go here i think uh pat text me today he's like there's a 1a and a 1b no upon further review there is only Don't one fucking pressure me I don't know, like, don't, it, no, there's just one, because I don't want my second pick to get yelled at, okay? With the first pick, I pick the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, actually, that's, that would have been my first pick, too, actually. That is the I, correct, I don't that fucking is the get it. Pick. I don't fucking get it. You it, know what it is? Okay, you look at the Ultimate Warrior, can you name a few matches that were great? Yeah, you can name the WrestleMania match with uh, Macho Man Randy Savage, the retirement match. Uh, Hulk Hogan, Hogan match is okay, uh, but other than that, he doesn't have my cage skills. match with Rick Rude at uh, no, SummerSlam. That, Slam was, that was not even good. That wasn't even good either. He just runs to the ring. He was all energy. There's no there's no substance to him other than being a roided up guy who runs to the ring and has really shitty matches. But he was a champion. Vince loved him, so he's going to be on top of the mountain. But in the grand scheme of things, he's not any good. How cool. Was the Ultimate Warrior though when you were like eight? Oh, he's the best. He was the best. He was the best. I've like never been was... so ex- I've never been so excited for a guy to re-debut at WrestleMania against Triple H. Oh man, that was so sweet. And that then was... it was like a terrible match. Yeah. Who could have seen that coming? And then and then when he was in WCW, and I was like, okay, he's back Oof. with Hogan. Maybe they can re. And then it was it was. Honestly, if you burned garbage, it would probably be more enjoyable than having him come back again. I would say that's fair. So, Matt, that was the correct pick. I'm very happy you did it. Now, Jordan, looking panicked, second overall pick, overrated wrestler. There's there's someone who I think is genuinely the most overrated person in wrestling ever. But I think I'll be able to get them much later. So I'm going to wait. My first pick for the most overrated wrestler of all time is... Mr. Bill Goldberg himself. Uh, uh, see, that's it. That's I have seen, if you've seen one fucking Goldberg match, you've <laughs> seen them all. The jackhammer, I will admit, is a fucking cool move. I love the jackhammer. And his spear is probably the best spear ever. And he has an awesome spear, but he is the, the very embodiment of, let's just say, super nutritional wet bread. 
Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, I've never seen him cut a good promo or one that really blew my mind. I've never really say, seen him say anything in, any intellectual. He was literally um, Brock Lesnar without whatever substance you think Brock Lesnar has. Um, so that's I it. Say, Goldberg. I say with Goldberg. That's an, insult, that's an insult to Brock Lesnar. The best thing about Goldberg was his entrance. And let's let's okay. Yeah. Let's call a, let's call a spade a spade here. His small window in WCW when he had that long winning streak was electric. Was the best. But thing it was WCW booking ever did. driven. I th- it was Absolutely. booking driven. But what I'm going to say is, you take out that small window. Bill Goldberg is wrestling booking driven. <laughs> I know, but I'm saying like you put the talent in the wing in the ring, right? And they do what they will with it, right? I don't. I really don't think like. Goldberg kept winning kind of because he wouldn't drop the belt and also because he was booked to win. But you can't tell me he did anything in the ring that was like Mm-mm. mind-blowing, Mm-mm. right? Like he did the same unique. shit every time. He was unique in his presentation. Yeah. He, he is very similar to the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, that's why I said 1A, 1B. Yeah, the matches were shit. So I'll, I'll, I'm will i going to – I'm very really happy to get Goldberg here. I think that's like – I thought that was very pretty easy of a pick, um, but yeah. So Pat, right, so, actually, uh, Pat might have the hardest pick here. Uh, no, I don't. I actually ha- know exactly who I'm going to pick, runner, runner. Um, but it's just what order I'm going to do it in. So my pick, the Doesn't third matter. overall pick, overrated uh, wrestlers in history. Uh, this was a slam dunk for me. I've said it from day one every time I talk about him. Um, Lex Luger is number three. Damn yeah, that's, it. that's so easy. Um, yeah. That's, uh, you, know, you, you start from the days when he was the Lex Express, which was the worst gimmick of all time, uh, riding a bus. Or that in WCW. He, he, yeah, he hated riding a bus. And that's when I first knew about him. He was the narcissist before that. That was awful. He was just looking at himself. It was all show, no go. He was a horrible worker, no substance to him, no charisma. When he was in WCW, he was pushed. He is the ultimate fraud wrestler where he looks great and he convinces whoever is in charge he's something when he's nothing. He's always been nothing. And it's tragic what happened to Miss Elizabeth, but he's at fault for that. And I will never forgive him for that. So Lex Luger, number three. So if you look at the first three guys that were taken, they all have one thing in common. They all look really, really good. I can pro. But Pat... Your guy, the Lex Luger, the guy you picked, this is the, this is super sad. Is the best wrestler of those three. Uh, uh, I don't know about that. Yes. I think Goldberg, I Goldberg was better. I would put Goldberg ahead of Lex Luger. Goldberg can't sell a lick. Yeah, but that's the gimmick isn't selling. I think Goldberg's offense overrode. Yeah. I th- I to think his Lex, detriment. To his detriment. Yeah. Lex Luger yes. portrayed himself as a great worker when, in fact, he may be one of the worst workers ever. Oh, he's not he's, a good worker. Uh, he's I'm not saying Lex oh, Luger's a good but worker. He's, he's ultimate warrior level bad worker. This is going to sound ridiculous, mm. but Goldberg's <laughs> like WWE work recently actually showed a little bit of difference, and that's what puts him over Lex Luger for me. Is it showed his, like his recent stuff? But if you go like I have, yeah, like I'm trying to make my kids like it they gave him some personality, yeah. which I mean I'll give him points for that. For like be being willing or needing a paycheck. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Um <laughs> after that, easy pick for me after that is another Vince McMahon pet project. He saw dollar signs. The man was six eight, looked like Damn a million it. bucks. Um, me. I thought for sure I could he, get him. His first big push, him. big per, first push in the company was a feud against Hulk Hogan. He's went by many names. I'm going to call him Sid Vicious. Sid Vicious is my pick. My, Psycho Sid, baby. My fourth, the fourth Psycho pick. Um, he, I thought I could get him on the wrap. Damn he it. looks, he looks like he should be something. Um, he was portrayed as something. He's won the title multiple times. Um, during the Attitude Era, he had a bit of a resurgence because Vince always saw money with him. Took the belt off Bret Hart a few times. Um, but then at the end of the day, he had a WrestleMania match, uh, WrestleMania main event against The Undertaker. Possibly one of the worst matches in WrestleMania main event history. And uh, if you believe the folklore, he actually shit himself during that match. And The Undertaker said they had to go home earlier because the smell was so bad and he didn't want shit to go down Sid Vicious's leg. If that doesn't scream overrated, I don't know what does. So Lex Luger, Sid Vicious, runner, runner. Boom, body bag, they suck. Four picks in, not really any contentious I feel like argument. five is going to be, I feel like I'm going to stay on track with that not being contentious. Yeah? Um, I've never understood this guy's appeal. 
Um, I never thought he literally, I just, I'd never get it. Um, I'm going to pick Diesel. Um, oh, AK. No, oh, come no, on. No, yeah. that's I think not. he's, inc- I think I, it, you can say the NWO. Defend yourself and then I'll tell you why you're was, right. was great. You can say that all you want. Um, I don't think he, when I think of the NWO, I don't, th- I think of Kevin Hall last. Kevin Nash, you mean? Ke- sorry. Oh, fuck. I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> I think of Kevin Nash last. I think of Hulk Hogan because of how big it was for him to turn heel. I think of oh, fucking Scott Hall, Scott man. Hall. That guy was awesome when he was yeah. Razor Ramon. Um, that guy His was a great was promo. Fun. I never found um, Kevin Nash to be a good promo. I've found his move set to ro- to be a shittier version of Goldberg. Like it was fucking boring. It was like a big boot and a power bomb. Um, so for me, like I I've never enjoyed Kevin Nash. I think he goes down in the NWO stable with a lot more credit than he deserves. And I also have it on at least from a lot of the things I read leading up to this that he poisoned a lot of bullshit. Like he was not a great person to work with in both companies. And for me, like if you're a boring talent, I I, I just don't like, think he was good. the way I see I really it. Don't. Anybody I think he's who's overrated. at the Anybody who's at the top of the game, Hulk Hogan, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, were not easy people to deal with. And that's why they stayed on top for so long, because they refused to leave the top. But was Kevin Nash really at the top of the game? Like when he was was no, when he was diesel, he was rolling along with Shawn Michaels. There's a Yeah, but that's that's the same bullshit that happened with Sid Vicious. There's a quote from Kevin Nash. So he was the booker in WCW, and everyone's like, Oh, he was the worst booker ever. He just booked all his buddies good. He said, if somebody comes to you with the keys to a Ferrari and says, here, take it. It's yours. Are you going to say no? Not going to turn that down. No. Okay, so if you, no. okay, that's fair. If you, um, I can probably, I would be pretty confident that if someone gave me the keys to a Ferrari, I would be able to make sure I don't drive it off a cliff. You would drive it like a dasshole. For sure. No, because I respect the Ferrari. Kevin <laughs> Nash drove the, the Ferrari off the like uh, I don't know, Jordan. Here you go. So I can drive. Here's I can thing. drive. Jordan, if you had picked him in the fifth round, I was just going to say that. I'd be like, all right, I can People live with this. Is way too early. so fondly, and I think you that's had, bullshit. You put him with good talent, he could have a good match. The reason he didn't draw Name is one memorable he, Kevin Hall match. Uh, Kevin Hall doesn't exist. It's Kevin Nash. God, I got to stop doing that. Kevin Nash. So Diesel against <laughs> Shawn Michaels so had, I think, two good matches. He had two good matches against Bret Hart. Three good okay, so two all-world generational talents carried his ass to his, uh, his best British matches. Bulldog and him had a couple of decent matches. British Basically, Bulldog if you put him with a good man. worker, he Speaking, can have a good work. British good Bulldog match. might be on the top 15 list of underrated wrestlers. Oh, one day we'll get to that list. I don't yeah, so don't, I, I, I put him, I put British Bulldog <laughs> up there with the first two guys in terms of yeah. in-ring work when he's not high or whatever else. All right, uh, Matt. So I'm so happy race. with my pick. I think I all really you, all like you NWO pick. marks no. are going to fucking sit no. there. And Honestly, I don't even think of him as an NWO guy. I think of him as Diesel. Oh, he was shit as Diesel. So, he yeah. Was... So, Matt, Matt, two horse race. Go pick your second pick unless you've really fucked this up. Then it's just me all the way. The few you guys to think Diesel's any good is fucking okay. bananas to me. So, holy shit. I look at my list. I got, I separated, I have six guys in my first, or five guys in my first tier. Four of them are gone. So, I'm going to take the fifth guy because I feel like if he's in your, if I at one point thought he was first tier, I got to pick him. And I think it's Scott Steiner. Oh, that's okay. a great pick. He's Scott Steiner's yeah. fucking yeah. terrible. But I don't think he's overrated. I think a lot of bad. people... That, that's when you know it's a good pick when someone just jumps... Oh, bad. Yeah, he's fucking shit. He's so <laughs> terrible. Bad. No, but I think... Terrible. But, 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 but... I think it's a good pick. But I think the problem here is I think everyone also agrees that Scott Steiner sucks. No. See, that's where I think his overrated quality comes. But I don't think I he's think overrated. Now I think he's accurately he rated as being ass. No, because at one point he was top level. They brought and him everybody... into they brought him into WWE to feud with Triple H because they thought he was the the, the king shit. Right, but were they? But did that hold over time? No, like, it did. People... It was terrible. No, but oh, no, so no, he's no. not That's overrated. Like, he's not That's currently what... overrated. He continued he to is, make yeah. money. He made money for twenty years because everybody said, "Wow, well, he's probably going to be a top guy. He's probably going to be a top guy." It was a terrible promo. Portrayed as a good promo guy. He has some of the all-time best bad promos. In the ring, is he okay? He's not bad, but he's not this great worker. He used to be a collegiate wrestler. No, it's he crazy that I 
I can't believe, I still can't believe to this day that him and Rob, like those are some of my favorite Rick. tag team matches to watch. Rick. Rick. I suck you're tonight. I know. Sure. I'm really <laughs> you're I've, you're, you're I've, shit in the bed with names. I, right now. I have, I'm, I'm glad I'm reading. Like names is the first to go when I'm drinking, and we are right in the middle of it. But no, I, I love those two. Like I could watch Scott. And Rick but that's Steiner why they were a great tag, tag team. Teams. But I don't think team, historically but... people sit there and go like, "Oh man, Scott Steiner, what a great wrestler!" Like he's, he's just a footnote in history. I. I... You watch some early Scott Steiner stuff, and he was a great wrestler. But the average fan doesn't look back fondly on Scott Steiner to consider. I disagree. I have a tendency That's who you talk to. You, I think. All right, Matt. Back to you for your second second in a row here. Okay. I hope so- I agree with this one more because that was a shit pick. He was over. He Diesel sucks. Fifth overall. Yeah. Easy Diesel there, was buddy. trash. I'll die on that hill. Diesel sucks. Okay, so I got two. I think I can get the second one that I'm thinking. Uh, when it comes back to me, this guy had, and you guys might cut this up, but I have to pick this guy. This guy had one of the coolest entrances in the world, but that was it. Scotty Too Hotty. No. Ray Mysterio. You put him in a ring, he was shit. He The Boogeyman. Who's the pick? Say the pick. He had a cult following the Sandman. CM Punk. Oh. The Sandman. Wow, that's early for the Sandman. No, I like that. I like that at seven. I like that at seven because... I really do think people people hear uh, the Sandman's entrance and they're like, "Enter Sandman." Oh, yeah, Enter was Sandman. it hard to remember the name of that song? Yeah, okay, easy. Kevin Kevin Hall, <laughs> Ron Steiner. Ron Listen, I can't Steiner. remember names, but I know Metallica's greatest hits off by her. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, Matt. I think you might have dropped the ball here. I think this is too early. No, Sandman. I don't. Think the I Sandman did. is exactly. What you yeah. is exact? He's, he's exactly rated. what you he's need. He's properly to be. rated. Yeah. No one's looking at Talk him and going. Talk to ECW marks. Talk to ECW marks. Like, yeah, but he's just a guy with a kindle stick, and he just hits people with it. That's all he does, and bashes the beer can on his head. Jordan, make me host. I will put on the Sandman's entrance. We will all go crazy. And if but that's I show not because of the right Sandman. That, that's because like, of the it. song. Yeah. Matt, I think you might have. No, dropped the ball. entrance. The entrance makes him overrated because you put the entrance on. People go nuts. I think that's a worse pick People than Diesel. Go nuts. I'll die on that. That's, that's a worse yeah, pick I'm not, than Diesel. I'm not convinced no, on that pick. No, I, I, it's not I, quite a slick, but it's I not had good. Him, it's up there. I had him the in gun. my second tier, and I will die with him on my second tier. He's a right. terrible wrestler. All right, not a good promo. Is it he wasn't portrayed entrance. as a good wrestler. He was never portrayed as a good wrestler. He was portrayed as a great hardcore wrestler. No, he's portrayed as a badass who hurt people. That was it. He was still portrayed as that. Okay. That doesn't make but, him hey, a good wrestler. So Diesel was up, and it was – Matt, you did get with Scott Steiner. I think he might have dropped the ball with Sandman. Let's, we'll see if he no. can recover later. Matt, no. uh, Jordan, you're up next with your third pick. This might be where I lose the draft because this is going to be an off-the-wall pick. But uh, this is someone who I've really come to not not like, especially with the rise of women's wrestling. Um, the Fabulous Moolah is going to be my third-round pick for the most overrated wrestlers of all time. I understand that she's dead. I am well aware that she's dead. She's actually a phenomenal wrestler. No, she wasn't. No. No, she wasn't. (laughs) Um, She was predatory. She was... Okay, let's all say allegedly. This is... Okay, sorry. She was allegedly predatory. And I think the WWE was looking for a, um, a figure that they could push in... Like their growing of the woman's business, and they picked the fabulous moolah, and I think that was a horrible choice. I think she's like she. I think she's overrated because I think she was like the maybe one of the only people doing women's wrestling at the beginning, and then she kept herself on top by pretty much pimp slapping everyone else around her, and then <sighs> here we are. I uh, yeah, I don't uh, no, I Joe Jordan. Don't agree with that pick. No, I think that's I'll, too early for that. I will die on that hill. I will die on the hill of the Fabulous Moolah. Uh, you better have the best pick in uh, draft history. You're telling me if you watch Fabulous Moolah matches, if you look at her entire history, and then you think about the fact that like WWE pushed her as like the woman's pioneer, that that there's fits. a reason. There's a reason though they've taken her off of all. Well, there's so much controversy around her. Yeah. Yeah, that, that doesn't make her overrated. That just makes her a scu- that just makes her a scumbag. <laughs> you can, yeah, but like if people think about the pioneers of women's wrestling, who's the first name that probably comes to mind? Sensational Sherry. 
If okay, but I'm saying like <laughs> if you're not you, who is WWE ingrained into fabulous, their heads? Fabulous Moolah and Mayhem, and that's why she's only ingrained. because of the attitude era. Yeah, yeah I would say well, so. Yeah. All right, so um, well, I'm gonna I go I got two in a row. Um, you got after the top four picks. I have my fifth and sixth pick just sitting there, lying there, so they're ready to go. Uh, so just the order. I'm gonna go order because I just want to embarrass Matt's pick. The the correct wrestler to Tommy pick. Dreamer. The, You're gonna go Tommy yeah. Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer is the Tommy most Dreamer's overrated. A better he's, re- he's a better wrestler than. Okay, no one the most, thinks Tommy Dreamer is overrated. Everyone thinks he's overrated. Tommy no. Dreamer is accurately rated. No, he's not. Yes, he no. is. He is portrayed as the heart and soul of ECW. And because he was. That, because he I, was. If I could pick all of ECW as overrated, I would. Because ECW is the most but overrated. You just thing admitted in that history. the Sandman is a good pick, you fucking idiot. No, I didn't. No, you I just didn't. said all of ECW was overrated. Yeah, so, oh but Tommy Dreamer on the list of most overrated ECW is number one. No, you're wrong. I will argue with you all day, Matt, because Jordan's list is so atrociously bad. You can, <laughs> you can deflect all you want, but you just joined me by picking Tommy Dreamer. Yeah, I think Tommy Dreamer. I, ha- I felt I needed an e- I needed somebody, so I I had the Ultimate Warrior. I had Scott Steiner, who was more of a WCW guy, and I felt like I needed to grab the most overrated ECW guy. So I grabbed Sandman, knowing Tommy Dreamer was there. Because I think Tommy Dreamer is a better wrestler. I think he's appropriately rated. I think he's had a career because he can wrestle. There's a reason Sandman isn't wrestling anymore. And it's not because he's drunk in a bar, which he is. But Yeah, which is awesome. But no, I just, I, I, this, this, I think this is a pick of perception. And my perception with Tommy Dreamer is he's always been overrated. He's the heart and soul. He's been portrayed as this godlike figure in ECW. And it's just, no, it doesn't do it for me. He's just another guy. He's just an. Indie, I feel like he's an indie guy that fell ass backwards into something good, and I feel like he's overrated completely. So, um, my next pick. I don't know. If you guys might have to. Be, how does it feel that up on your pedestal? That was so shitty. The Tommy Dreamer pick, okay. like Diesel about- and Fabulous Moolah. Okay. Uh, anyways, so uh, my next pick. I th- I I, th- I hope the you guys are on board on this one. The company in the world named a fucking battle royal. No, sorry, wasn't it? No, they got no. rid of it. Oh, but it anyways, was at one point, right? Anyways, yeah, so my my like next pick, uh, I think <laughs> it did look like a vagina. I think, <laughs> in my mind, with old school golden era uh, WWF, he's got to be. Mo- they trot this guy out like he was the greatest draw in wrestling history, and he does it with a two by four and saying USA hacksaw Jim Duggan is my next pick in overrated wrestlers. I don't know why this man is beloved. I guess it's just the USA chant. Anybody can just yell it and get behind it. The man came out in Toronto one time and did the USA chant. It was so stupid. He's never won a title. He's never been prominent. He's not a draw, but he's portrayed as this Hulk Hogan-like figure from the golden era, and it's just so upsetting. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, overrated, moving on. That's all I got to say, and I don't think anybody's going to disagree with me. I mean, it's it's low-hanging fruit, but you're you're right. Jim Duggan, that's a shallow pick, man. It's pretty shallow pick. It's a pretty easy pick. It's like he's. Yeah. It's a two foot putt. It's. It, I. I just personally think if you're gonna. Matt, are you two, walking outside? I gotta let the dog out. Is that? Are you going pee? Like, is that a euphemism for something? No, or? no he's actually in the dog out. Just oh, the dog. yeah, yes. Yeah. I'm fucking so getting just, sick right now. Okay, Jordan, your next pick. Uh, this pick is going to get me in trouble. Um. This fabulous well, Mula didn't get you in trouble? No, this is going to get me in real trouble. I've never understood how this guy um, had any sort of run. Never mind the one of the longest intercontinental title runs in the history of the world. Uh, how the fuck the Honky Talk Man... List. The Honky Talk Man is revered in any wrestling circle is mind-boggling to me. Um, I don't get it. Uh, he, he was a fat Elvis Presley. Um... That guy looked like the only weight he ever lifted was his own when he got up in the morning. Um, I don't understand an ounce of it. So It's great. Hey, all fairness, great storyteller. We talked to him for three hours. Great storyteller. But I do agree with you, Jordan. Very overrated. Very overrated. But you know what? Sorry, for the rest Sorry of his, Wayne. But... Thank you. But for the rest of his career, for the rest of his life, on his poster, whenever he goes to an indie show, 
He's the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion of all time. And it's Banana Land to me. It's insane to me. Absolutely insane. The story goes that they kind of forgot about it. Because he lost... When did he lose the belt? He lost it to Warrior at... Mania. What Mania? No, uh, I don't remember. I, off the top of my head. I think it's Mania 5, isn't it? Isn't it the Mega Powers Explode? Maybe, yeah. I think that's what it is. So that whole storyline, I'm going to check because I feel like... So Jordan, Jordan, I think if you would have taken the Honky Tonk Man at 2 and just pushed all the rest of your picks down, I think that would have made a little more sense. I think you reached a little too early for Diesel and Fabulous. I, I honestly think, like, I truly believe, like, the Honky Tonk Man for me is, like... I think Diesel and the Fabulous Moolah are more overrated in casual fans' minds, whereas the Honky Tonk Man, I think, is, like... It's like Universal if the, cas- Ethan, yeah. the casual fan never thinks about him, ever, and then when they do, they laugh. So mm-hmm. that's where I'm at on that. All right, Matt, uh, your final two picks, fourth and fifth overall. This is a SummerSlam, by the way, so we don't sound oh, dumb. Sorry. All right, um, so I'm going to go runner-runner here, four and five, fourth round and fifth round. Both guys I want are there. Well, one guy and one girl. Um, the girl I'm going to take is Sable. I'm going to take Sable. Wow. That's, you know what? Brock Lesnar is so see, pissed right now. I can see where you're coming he from. He doesn't but listen, I hope. I, I hope he does. <laughs> uh, Matt, I see where you're coming from, but that's a tough look considering she's one of the most popular figures in Attitude Era history. For what? We have shit Dis- on I, the I'm Ultimate saying, Warrior. I'm not answering that. <laughs> we have shit on the Ultimate Warrior, Goldberg, Lex Luger, Psycho Sid, to, to be clear, I'm, Scott Steiner, who are all yeah. who are all looks, who are all at the top, oh boy. or perceived as good because of looks. Oh no, Matt. Oh, Matt Sable Matt, was not, perceived. Matt, I'm not just Sable was put there because of the well. way she looked. Oh I'm boy, okay Matt. With that. Matt, I can't believe she's you said that lady. in this current era in 2021 that you would <laughs> say that. She's a great looking lady. But you will not say you. But she was no, not a good professional wrestler. She prefers she prefers woman actually. So I can't believe you said that. There's there is no there's no professional wrestler female there's no female professional wrestler who goes I was inspired to be a great professional wrestler by watching Sable. Yes, just no, but they but they're able to be a professional wrestler because of Sable. Yeah, but I think just in the general. Did you mean overview, to do that? Because that was a cool rhyme. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> but in the general overview of overrated people, overrated wrestlers in history, I think that's spot on to put her where she is. If Sable worked in production, would she lay cable? Boy. Why are you rhyming right now? <laughs> <laughs> was Sable in a stable? Oh, Jesus. Oh, boy. Good job. Right. Was she uh, ever on a label? Jordan drank all the Belgian pecan. <laughs> it's almost done. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jordan, uh, Matt, Matt, your final pick? I'm really happy with how my draft has turned out. Uh, I kind of wish I would have got Psycho Sid, but I mean, Scott Steiner's fine. The last one, I'm going to go a little bit more recent. Um, I'm going to go to someone who spent some time in WWE, but now is in AEW. I just think he's supremely overrated. I'm going to go with Jake Hager. Oh, I think he's pretty, uh, I think he's pretty accurately. Rated. I think he's pretty accurately. No, I think he's, I think he's pumped up as this big MMA guy. Uh, fucking never lost, man. Yeah, okay. No, you know all you know I can talk about that all day. <laughs> but it's just yeah, yeah I just you 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 were you're saying that you're saying that with a Bellator's large, mid-level large, heavyweight division. I think I think one of the most match. forgettable title runs in WWE history is And that's the thing. He was a he held the title in WWE. He won money in the bank and cashed it in. Mm-hmm. Uh I mean, he he's just he's someone who I think should have just remained on the mid card but ended up getting to the top. And then they brought him in at AEW and made this big debut for him. And why? Why? Because he's an MMA star, sort of. Star? Kinda. He just fights MMA. <laughs> he fights MMA. Like he, he and at this point, he's nothing more than a heavy. You put they keep putting him against Wardlow, and I'm like, Wardlow's way cooler. Yeah. Wardlow has way more potential. Why why do I care if him and Jake Hager are having a match? I, I'm very happy with the way that turned out. All right. Well, uh, Jordan, your final pick, flight and a pint, overrated wrestlers. Uh, this is, in my opinion, the perfect fifth round pick because they didn't get pushed as much as others. But this screams WWE overration. I made up a word there and I'm happy with it. Um, <laughs> the Great Kali. 
Uh, you know what? He was on my list. Is uh, so, and he's overrated in the same way that my last pick was. Where I think most fans should think of him like a zero. Like the words the great Kali should never ever come out of their mouth ever again. I, I'd put him in the the Jake Hager. There's a match made for him that they will never do again because it's bad. Awful. Aesthetically. That's how overrated he is. They made a match for him and then brought him back out during the last part of the match for him just to put over another guy who, by the way, I don't think ever deserves to be on this list because he was there for a reason and it served the reason to go to India. I think he's he's appropriately rated. I think he's appropriately rated. The great Kali is, was a Vince McMahon wet dream come to life and he should never be ever. He should never have been in wrestling. He should never have been allowed to ring, but he was even run a championship. I think in like 2008 or nine or seven or something like that. So um, that's my last pick. The great Kali, not so great. Frankly, um, we should call him the shit Kali. That's what he is. There you go. Um, so I have two not picks. the shit in a good way, by the way. I have two picks that I'm kind of going back and forth with. Uh, it's just a matter of who do I, who did I dislike the most that was, Push felt like I they were pushed to the moon, but they were so overrated it didn't matter. Um, so this one, I think he just rode coattails. He went to both organizations and rode coattails. Um, I'm I'm picking X Pac. Oh, I thought you were going to pick Kevin Nash. Are you out of your mind? I thought you were no, going to pick think, Diesel. I, <laughs> I think X Pac is that afterthought in DX. I think he's the uh, that afterthought in. I just blew his Pat just NWO. blew his list. I think he yeah, was just you did. Like, if Pat what, had a what? list, he blew it. He, he was just, it. he was in the click and he was pushed to the moon for no reason. You other. literally just picked probably a top 20 worker of all time on an overrated I, list. I That's think, fucking wild. I think X Pac is drastically <laughs> overrated. He was never, he was never overrated. That's I think very, Pat he was a low no level player in a lot of stables. X-Pac. He was held oh there as God. a, like that. No, what did you just I think I, I would have accepted I like Billy Gunn. In, no, in this I, slot. I I believe X Pac was pushed was portrayed as someone who was a big. Deal. I believe you. Th- you think you're smarter than everybody, and you're you not. just proved that you was are so not. So bad, no, Pat. I'm not. That is I'm awful. Bad. You know that what? I'm really smarder bad. than you two. My list no, is fucking not. No. list. No. You blew any any attitude. Any person who listens to this podcast who watched Attitude Era Wrestling is going to be very upset to see X Pac as your fifth round pick. That's going to well, be fucking offensive. That was it. A- you know what, Jordan? I almost picked Walter, and he's in my honorable mentions. What? <laughs> Are you I'm this off. He won match of the year last year from Anyways, this very podcast. So to recap, Matt had the first overall pick. He picked Matt, the ultimate Matt, player. can I be your honorary brother going forward? Like, Pat's a fucking <laughs> disgrace to your family. Can I be Jordan Schofield? Look, right out of time. Right out of time. Matt had Ultimate Warrior, Scott Steiner, Sandman, Sable, and Jake Hager. When we shut this Jordan, off, we're coming back on so I can yell at you. <laughs> Jordan had Goldberg, Diesel, Fabulous Moolah for some reason, Honky Tonk Matt, and he finished it out with Great Kali. Pat, the great list, had Lex Luger, Sid Vicious, Tommy Dreamer, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and then he finished it out with, I think, overrated X Pac. This is a slick you level. You that's, Matt, that's a slick level bad pick. It's X Pac at five. No, it's like, not. It's there's not, so many other people. Level. No, nothing that's a slick, slick level. That's Anyways, a slick level shit pick. Names that we could have put on the list, I put both. I, w- I had both Hardy Boys on my list. Both? Both. Uh, I had Buff Bagwell. I had yeah. RVD on my list. Are you what? fucked? <laughs> what? Rob I'll fucking you. fight you. I'll fucking drive to your house and fight had, you if you talk bad about Rob Van Dam. I had Alberto Del Rio. Fair. Okay. Uh, and I had Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Yeah, King Kong Bundy. Actually, yeah. uh, Alberto yeah, King Del King Rio Pan. should have been in our list. Um, I, uh, and then to go on my... Uh, my Shane I did... Had, you know what? Shane sacrificed enough that he doesn't deserve to be on this I list. Had, yeah. uh, two, I had two good. alternate lists. I had... Uh, they were labeled to piss Jordan off. I had Walter and Okada. Oh my fucking god! Oh god. Go fuck yourself. What and then on, uh, and then there was just there was just one name on Matt's uh, to piss Matt off. John was, Cena. It was John Cena. Yeah. It was twentieth uh, century Hulk Hogan. John yeah. Cena. Hey guys, can I ask one question? Hey, um, quickly. If I had picked Roddy Piper, would you guys have? I would have. No, I would have turned off the Zoom. I would have turned off the Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, uh, you could be the judge. The listener could be the judge. Let us know. Hit us up in the in the comments. Jordan's very upset. Uh, so so he's on tilt right now. You can follow us on Untapped at Pat Gani at Gani Matt at Jsco fifty five. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, 
subscribe to our YouTube page. We're going to put some fun stuff up on there. Support local, drink local, and we will see you next week for another great episode of Bros, Bumps, and Beers. Yeah.